Folks, I know a lot of you are really excited for me to get a video out about Betaflight 3.0. Betaflight 3.0 brings a lot of interesting, new, awesome features to the table. How does he keep doing it? It just keeps happening. I don't know. And, and, and they're new, and they're interesting, and they're different, and they're hard to understand, and you want me to explain them to you. And I want to explain them to you, too. But that video is not, this is not that video. Because, number one, at the time of this recording, Betaflight 3.0 hasn't officially been finalized yet. And so it could still change, and I don't want to make a video explaining something and then have it not be correct because it changed out from under me. But then also, some of this stuff is new and different enough that I person I feel like the teacher who's reading the book one chapter ahead of the class. D term and P term, set point weight. I never heard of that before. What is it? I don't know. Hold on. I got to go read about it. And when I feel like I understand it, then I'll explain it to you. But it may be a little bit of a delay in getting that video out uh, until that happens. But here's something I can tell you about that I do know about, that I understand, and that I can explain to you, and I feel confident it's not going to change. And that is the notch filter. So let's talk about what is a notch filter and, and what filtering is in Betaflight and why is the notch filtering so interesting and exciting. The filtering that's already in Betaflight is a low-pass filter. And to use a musical example, it's like you turn down the treble on your car stereo so the music gets really bassy. Well, it doesn't actually get more bassy. It just gets less trebly. And the reason that's included, and that's a standard part of any gyro chip, is to have a built-in low-pass filter. We're using a software-based low-pass filter in Betaflight to give us more configurability and more customizability. But the reason that's a sort of a standard part of any kind of gyro application is that whenever you're measuring gyro data, there will oftentimes be lower frequency data that you care about and higher frequency noise that you want to get rid of. So, for example, in your quadcopter, when the quadcopter rolls to the left or rolls to the right, that's the data that the flight controller cares about. Is that a commanded move or is it an uncommanded move? Do we need to make it happen more or make it happen less? And those moves are very low frequency, right? But the, the noise from the props at, say, 250 hertz or 300 hertz, that's just vibration. We just call that noise, right? We don't care about it. We wish it weren't there. We don't need to, we couldn't possibly compensate for it if, if we wanted to. And in fact, trying to compensate for high frequency noise when you can't do it is why when you raise your D term, your D gain, your motors get hot. The ESCs are trying to compensate for that noise, but the motors just can't move that fast. And the motors turn, that, that electrical energy turns into heat instead of mechanical energy. So low pass filtering is a really, really important part of a, using a gyro. And we have a low pass filter and it just cuts down the, uh, the the high frequency, the treble, if you will. Generally, with a quadcopter, a five-inch copter roughly is, is the sort of the standard that I'm used to dealing with, you'll have, if we look at this spectral uh, output, we can see, you'll have a peak in the data somewhere around, well, in this case, it looks like the peak is a little bit below, see 200 hertz here, and you can see here there's a peak in the data and that is the, the, the main vibration frequency from the props. And that may be sometimes as high as 250, maybe a little lower, but it's usually somewhere in the range of, of uh, maybe 300 down to, say, 150 at the outside. Okay. Meanwhile, if you see this spike down at the bottom where the data goes way off the top of the chart, down below, let's say 20 to 50 hertz, right? Somewhere down below there. That's the actual quadcopter motion that we really are concerned with. And what the low pass filter does is it says, I'm going to roll off, I'm going to attenuate those higher frequency signals and leave the lower frequency signals alone to, to, to get rid of that noise. So I'm not trying to, I'm not getting, just having that noise shouting in my ears so I can hear the signals that I really want to hear. Now, I've talked in other videos about the fact that whenever you filter, you also add latency, and latency is bad for the performance of the flight controller. The more delay there is between reality and what the flight controller sees, the less able the flight controller is to compensate for uh, especially rapidly changing situations like prop wash. So having low latency, and which means less filtering, is very important for things like prop wash handling and having less latency just gives in general a more locked in and connected feel to your flight performance. But here's the problem. Take a look at this, this uh, big spike of data here. In order to really attenuate that effectively, we would need to move the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter way down. If you think about the low pass filter, 
it's sort of flat up below a certain point and then it rolls off above a certain point. And the slope of that roll off is, is fixed. And so in order to filter out this noise, we really need to move the cutoff way down so that that noise gets really attenuated. And the problem is that the more, the lower that cutoff is, the more latency we get on the signal that we really want. So there's this kind of happy medium we try to find where we've got enough attenuation of this high frequency noise without having too much latency. And it's not, it's not perfect. Because as you can see, this spike is very, very specific, isn't it? What if we could have a filter that went zoop, zoop, right? And cut out just this one spike that is coming from our motors. And that's exactly what the notch filter in Betaflight 3.0 allows you to do. The idea here is that the noise that we're trying to get rid of is not evenly distributed up above, say, 150 hertz. It's not a bunch of noise above 150 hertz. I mean, there is. But there's also this one very narrow spike of noise. And so instead of trying to get rid of that narrow spike of noise with a sort of a sledgehammer of a low-pass filter, let's use a scalpel of a notch filter. And here you can see a before and after picture that was posted by Robogenesis to RC Groups. Robogenesis, thank you. I've stolen your screenshot for this video. Thank you very much. I have, you know, no, no copyright intended, as they say on YouTube. <laughs> you can see the result of this notch filter. The, 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 it's, it is amazing, isn't it? Look at this. The notch filter has cut out this noise from the props. And now, when configuring the notch filter, what you need to do is you need to specify the center frequency of the notch and then the lower cutoff of the notch. And that, sh that determines sort of the location and the width of the V shape of the notch filter. And you might then ask, well, how do I know what those values should be? And the answer is it's not actually trivial. So in this case, Robogenesis has used a program called Spectra, and he's used Blackbox to get the gyro data and to generate a spectral plot. And we can see here that the peak, here's 200, here's 100, so this is about 150. So it looks like the peak is at about 180, let's say. And then the bottom is at about 150. So if I were to just off the cuff specify a, a notch filter for this gyro data, I would use a center of 150 and a low, or 180 and a low, lower limit of 150. And by the way, the upper limit would be the equivalence on the other side of 180. Uh, and then I would take a look at the results. So, so one of the things that you're going to have to do, you shouldn't just guess with the notch filter, you know, because you could make things worse, not better. But one of the things that you have to do is you have to look at the spectral data and figure out where your prop fundamental is. And that's going to change based on the KV motors you've got, based on the props you've got. It's all going to change. Uh, I hope I've heard that it's possible that black box viewer will have a spectral analyzer built into it at some point in the future. I think that someone is working on that and it's not ready yet, but it's coming. Black box viewer, the, 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 the fork of black box viewer with all the extra features, it does have a spectral analyzer in it right now, but it doesn't show the spectral plot for the entire, uh, the entire flight. It just shows for a slice of the flight. And what you really want is the spectral plot for the whole flight. So hopefully that will come and that will make it relatively easy for us to figure out what our notch filters should be. In the meantime, if you want to calibrate or configure your notch filter, the best thing to do is to use Spectra. And I have a video on how to use Spectra to generate this data. If that's something you're interested in, I'll, I'll link to it with a card in the upper right. So this is a really exciting feature. This has the potential to remove a re one of the biggest sources of noise that, and garbage data that's left and really clean up the data that the gyro is seeing. If we go to the next image, from Robogenesis post, we can see that here are the gyro traces before and here are the gyro traces after. And look how much cleaner they are. And cleaner gyro traces mean easier tuning. It means that you ha can raise your D gain more if you so desire and not get hot motors. It's just this, the notch filter is really exciting to me for the potential of, of increasing the tuning envelope and making it possible for even people who may have very noisy motors, maybe your bearings are shot or you got a slightly out of balance bell, to get a really good tune. So I'm really excited about this. I'm really looking forward to it. I will, of course, keep you updated as developments come out. And as always, happy flying.